The Japanese tourism industry has a toilet problem. Or rather, it had a toilet problem. According to Gizmodo, a 2014 survey revealed that more than 25% of Japanese tourists didn't know how to use the country's complex bidets. So, a consortium of companies known as the Japan Sanitary Equipment Industry Association, which includes Panasonic and Toshiba, among others, came together to depose the design challenge with unified bidet buttons. All eight of them. Just look at all those guys. Just a, just a bunch of proud men holding toilet symbols. Well, at least now, when you are confronted by a complex toilet on your next trip to Southeast Asia, you'll easily understand the symbols, many of which are not much of a departure from their previous iterations. Fan. Big fan. Turn the air on. Doesn't... Toilets need a fan. Swirl. Little... Sw oh, it's flush. That's a small flush, and the other one was a big flush. I understand my stupidity. Put down the lid. Up. Take the lid up. One or the other, depending on its position. Put the lid down. That was... This is the seat? Put the seat up? Black hole? What is it going in the black hole button? Oh, it's stop. It looks kind of like uh, buttocks getting spritzed. Maybe like a person at a water fountain. Oh my God, is it for your mouth? This one seems specific because it is a lady. So it is lifting her up. So maybe it is more of a pleasurable spritz? More of a recreational spritz? It's lady specific, so I don't need to touch the button. Maybe I'll try it though. That looks like wind. Wind from the fifth element. Maybe it's pre-flatulence. So like, there's going to be air, button, cover the smell. It's a mister! Lysol, got it. According to The Verge, toilet manufacturers will begin to use the new icons this year. The effort is part of a countrywide push to make Japan more accommodating to tourists before the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. You know, it's times like these when a nation can come together and rally around a single critical issue. For that, I am truly inspired. But you know, they still need a button for like, you gotta jiggle the thingy. You gotta. No, it doesn't. It's gonna keep going if you don't jiggle the thingy. I'll do it! Put the seat up. Researchers at Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard University have developed a soft robotic sleeve that can be slipped around your heart and mimic its twists and compressions to keep you alive. While 2,100 patients are lucky enough to receive a heart transplant every year in the US, this proof of concept is an interesting new development that could help the other, you know, 5.7 million who suffer from heart failure. The disparity is actually what motivated the clinicians and biomedical engineers who have spent years developing a potential mechanical alternative. A device that has a similar purpose has existed for years. It's a mechanical pump known as a ventricular assist device. It attaches to your heart and uses pumps and rotors to pump blood in and out of the heart. But the problem is that the medications associated with a VAD device increases your chances of having a stroke by 20% and it also makes you at much higher risk of a serious infection. This sleeve hugs your heart. Just gives it a little, come here heart. It never comes in contact with your blood and it mimics the heart's natural compression motion using only non-rigid biocompatible materials. Initial tests on pigs, now, mind you, they have the same shape and size heart as humans, so hold on to it. It shows that the sleeve restores hearts to 97% of their original cardiac output. The sleeve uses pneumatically powered air muscles to make the device bend and flex via remotely controlled actuators. According to the researchers, the soft robotic actuators or sleeves are essentially artificial muscles. And one day they could help failing hearts work well enough to even restore a previous quality of life. But let's hope you make some changes too, because I mean, your heart may be failed for a reason. So just, I'll put the bacon down if you put the bacon down. I'm never putting the bacon down. I'll do it. Last week, members of the Army Research Lab and its industry partners traveled to the Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland for a demonstration of the new JTARV hoverbike. The Joint Tactical Aerial Resupply Vehicle may look familiar, 
The original design was built by Australian Chris Malloy back in 2011. Malloy set up his own aeronautical firm, Malloy Aeronautics, which has partnered with the Army to bring these quick little hover bikes to the battleground. The Army wants to soon see these autonomous JTARBs flying 60 miles per hour or more to rapidly resupply missions. Associate Chief in the Army Lab's Protection Division, Tim Bong, even went as far to say that the JTARB could work like Amazon in the battlefield, in which soldiers will get resupplied in 30 minutes or less, no matter where or how they are positioned. The current prototype is electric. However, researchers are looking to build a hybrid propulsion system that would give it a range of 125 miles and a payload capacity up to 800 pounds. Now, given that this partnership didn't start until the summer of 2014, the hover bike, or sorry, the JTARV, is proof that agencies across private and public sectors can actually work together to quickly bring a new concept to fruition. Okay, now you can say that these are being built for autonomous missions, but you cannot honestly believe that they're going to keep people from jumping on a bike that looks like it was inspired by the Star Wars speeder bike. I am just getting on that thing and cruising, maybe at a safe 25 to 35 until I feel comfortable, then a 60, then I'll hit the fence, little endo off of that, small back trauma, but I already had that, so it's fine. Get back on that thing and learn. I'm David Banty. This is Engineering by Design. Oh my God, is it for your mouth? <laughs> <laughs>